My childhood dream was a rather peculiar one. Most kids say they want to be firefighters, teachers, veterinarians, and even the President of the United States. You know what I have always wanted to be? A strong independent woman who doesn't run her life by the needs of a man. This idea stemmed from my mom. She is the definition of an old-fashioned wife. My mother's life revolves around my dad, what he needs, wants, and how he feels. She's constantly doing things for him, and he doesn't appreciate it. My mom has always wanted to be a nurse, but with all the responsibility she has and the enormous lack of help, her dream has never been made into reality. There wasn't anyone to watch my brother and I, and on top of that, my dad was not supportive of her. He always made up excuses that there wasn't enough money, but the truth is that my dad didn't want to learn how to do things on his own. As I grew older, my mom told me stories about her journey with my father, and after each shorty, she provided me with a lesson. She told me to go to college, get my career set, and then I can think about having a man in my life. She always told me to make my own money, to not rely on a man for a living, because one day he can pick up everything and leave me, and I would be broken alone. She advised me to have my own bank account, and also to share one with my husband to pay bills and such. All the lectures she told me were the things that she wished she would have done, and if she had the opportunity to start over, that's exactly what she would do. My freshman year, I decided to join cross country. I was never athletic in any way. In fact, when I heard the word exercise, I wanted to cry. I cannot give a valid reason as to why in my right mind I decided to join, but I guess I wanted to feel like I had a purpose in life, and I wanted to be a part of something. Despite how peculiar my decision sounds, I don't regret it whatsoever. Throughout my years of cross country, I have learned countless things and I have been fortunate enough to develop a close relationship with my coach, Jason Brute. Jason can be seen as harsh, brutal, mean, sarcastic, and basically every descriptive word related to evil. But if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be who I am today. When I first started, I couldn't run for more than five minutes without walking. But Jason took notice that I came to practice each and every day. He saw my level of dedication and determination, and instead of kicking me off the team like I would have in any other sport, he worked with me and never gave up. Even though I was fat and always came in last place, I still finished the runs. I was never embarrassed, and it helped that there weren't ever any hurtful comments from my teammates. Only encouraging ones. After the first few weeks, I began to feel bad that my team always had to wait for me to finish, and during practices, I would always admire at how hardworking the varsity team was, how in shape they were, and how close they were to one another. And I held on to the idea that if I tried hard enough, I could too be a varsity athlete. And sure enough, that dream came true my sophomore year. My first cross country race of my freshman year, I ran 3109. For three miles, that's awful. My first race of my sophomore year, I ran a 2332. I have grown to love the sport as well as my teammates. I have accomplished one of my goals. I have a second home and a second family. And the only one I have to thank is Jason. I thank him for never giving up on me, always believing that I had the potential to succeed pushing me to my limits, and occasionally humoring me. With that being said, if anyone ever tells you you can't do something, you prove them wrong. Instead of letting your mindset control you or the hurtful words influence you, push through it, get through that mind block, and show the world what you can accomplish. As you grow up, you will come to realize that like all families, yours has its unique issues. My dad was raised in a broken home with a drug addict mother and an abusive alcoholic father. I guess my dad was never shown love as a child, so now with his children, or with anyone really, he is awkward and doesn't show affection. This no father-son relationship has unfortunately become a reoccurring trend in my family, and my brother has taken it especially hard. Instead of expressing his feelings through words, he takes his anger out on those who don't deserve it and often gets violent. All my life, my parents have had to deal with my brother and all his issues, so I have always tried to stay out of the way and attempted to be the perfect child. My intentions have been to never get in trouble, always get good grades, do things around the house, never talk back, demonstrate great qualities, and overall make my parents proud. 
Still to this day, my brother is a wild one, and I continue to hold the same responsibilities. Always trying to please my parents has led me to try to please others. Basically anyone I come in contact with, I never want to be seen as a burden, so I allow them to walk over me, use me, and take anything and everything they want. Many would say that they regret the decisions that they have made in life, but I don't regret one thing. I could wish that my brother wasn't the way he is, or I could wish that I didn't have a brother at all. But then I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be independent. I have learned to do things for myself, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. Being a sidewalk in life has made me stronger. I withstand many hardships and encounters, just like sidewalks hold up when earthquakes and jackhammers come at them full speed. The little flaws or struggles in my life are just tiny cracks that will always be there, but I learned valuable lessons from each and every one of them.